Hello, my name is Joey Schaefer, and I'm presenting on behalf of myself and Mark Zachary on the project we've been conducting, the use and operationalization of misinformation and disinformation by Wikipedia editors. First, our motivation for this project, research, political, and media attention on these areas of misinformation and disinformation has significantly increased since 2015 and 2016. However, people have been moderating false, misleading, hateful, and otherwise bad content on the internet long before 2016 or 2020. It's likely, however, that the terms that were used to describe some of this moderation and the behaviors that would fall under these definitions have shifted somewhat over the past 20 years. We're also really curious in how people outside of academia think about these concepts. We chose to use Wikipedia as a case study to study these questions because Wikipedia presents several advantages. First, Wikipedia has longitudinal available data since 2001 and 2002 up to the present day around editor behaviors. Wikipedia's focus on the construction of a public informational good through the encyclopedia is particularly relevant to concerns of verifiability, misinformation, disinformation, and has significant histories of dealing with these concerns in their, in their community. Additionally, these deliberations through Wikipedia's data archives are quite transparent at, to researchers. Our overall research question is what role misinformation and disinformation serve in discussions on the platform among editors. And we break this into three sub-research questions that we attempt to answer in this project. First, how frequently are these used in editor annotations on Wikipedia and how has this changed over time? Secondly, what kinds of articles are edited mentioning misinformation and disinformation? And finally, where in the encyclopedia do these terms appear? I want to do a quick disclaimer of what this study is not. We are not studying misinformation or disinformation on the platform, by which I mean where the encyclopedia is incorrect or misleading. And we're also not directly looking at how people correct mis- and disinformation on the platform. Instead, we are really focusing on how the concepts of mis- and disinformation are being discussed, deliberated, and used by editors. So at a high level, we first conducted a quantitative analysis of the term usage of mis- and disinformation over time within edit annotations. We also have collected data from other terms in Caroline Jack's report, Lexicon of Lies. We don't get into that in this project, but we are excited to pursue that in future work. Uh, and we use that to create descriptive time series of where these terms are used. We also engage in some qualitative page analyses. Um, so both what kinds of pages or topics have these terms appeared in discussions of and where on these pages do the terms appear? Is it only within the edit annotations? Do they appear in the article? And if so, in what subsection? Do they appear in the article title? Do they appear in a section header or just the body text? As well as do they appear on the talk pages at all? Our data is sourced from every English language edit annotation of uh, the English language Wikipedia, which is, com comprises just under half a billion, just around half a billion edits from 2001 to March of 2023. Um, when we filter to those that mention mis or disinfo, we have around 43,000 edits that are not from bot accounts that mention those terms. And for our more focused qualitative edit studies, we looked at the roughly 7,500 edits, which either happened in 2003 or prior, or had at least five edits in a particular year and namespace that mentioned mis or disinformation. Uh, for the qualitative set, this resulted in 493 unique articles. We later reduced this to 480 since some of these pages have since been deleted and are no longer live on the encyclopedia. So first, overall prevalence. It's unsurprising that we see a growth post-2015 in the commonness of these terms. Um, but there's an, also an interesting growth in around 2005 uh, in use of these terms. And so we're interested in why there's this early bump. We have a couple of candidate hypotheses that we hope to explore, explore more in future work. Po first, possible policy overlap shortly after 2005 is when the verifiability policy was established. And we think that people might have shifted to that more accepted language on the encyclopedia after that. Additionally, there's some possible topical relevance, particularly in 2005, around some discussions around the Second Persian Gulf War that made that particularly prominent. We also looked at where these terms appeared within the article text, and we see over time increasing appearances in the actual article text itself, not just in edit annotations. We do see many articles across all time periods that have uh, the terms only appear in their edit annotations, but we see increasing numbers of articles that have it appear in the actual article body itself as we uh, continue over time. Finally, we looked at our at topical distributions and we saw that there was significant topical diversity in what topics editors are referencing these terms in. Um, this includes, of course, areas that are commonly studied in mis- and disinformation research, including contemporary politics and public health, 
um, as well as um, some topics that we were not expecting, uh, including things like pop culture with many articles um, or geographic locations. Want to talk about some brief uh, implications and some discussion points that we had in our paper. Uh, first, there's a lot of use of mis- and disinformation terminology, especially recently in context beyond those that academic research has typically focused on, potentially meaning that there is interesting avenues to pursue there for future research. Uh, second, we used a comparatively novel measurement method by focusing on edit annotations for discovering where these terms are being used. In our literature review, we were only able to find one other paper that had used that as a primary data source. Uh, finally, we saw that there was fairly significant community definition work and usage of these terms, which show additional potential forms of expertise and practice that we're excited to explore in more depth in the near future. I want to also very briefly go over some future directions that we hope to pursue. We really want to get into what specific definitional features are used when, re when referring to mis- and disinformation on the Wikipedia platform, using some methods like discourse analysis and content analysis. We'd like to explore what editors are using these terms and if there are different subsets of editors engaging with different article topics using methods like network analysis. We'd like to expand the topic modeling approach that we started by using some predefined models. Um, we also are interested in how you, editors are using semantically similar terms, like, such as the other terms used in the Lexicon of Lies report. And finally, we'd like to engage with um, Wikipedia policy documents, codes of conduct, et cetera, to see where these deliberations are occurring beyond the immediate article texts. Um, we'd like to thank our reviewers and collaborators for their feedback, and uh, specifically Kaylee Champion and the Community Data Science Collective for help acquiring the data for this study. I'd also like to thank the National Science Foundation for uh, funding me, uh, me and supporting me while I was conducting this work. Um, uh, my contact is there, and I am excited to discuss this project with you. Thank you so much.